Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Ishita, Manager Corporate Wellness from Prudent Insurance Brokers, and I would like to thank you all for joining today's webinar session. Friends, aren't they the best part of our lives? Someone to share your joys with, someone to hold on to when you want to cry. Having someone trusty by your side helps you tide through the highs and lows of life. But in today's digital world filled with filters and worldwide networks, we often miss out on the authentic friendships. Did you know? Friendship can have a major impact on your health and well-being. They can help you thrive by reducing stress, boosting your self-esteem, and improving overall health. So let's understand the importance of social connections in your life and how can you nurture a healthy friendship. Today we are joined by Niyati Bapat. She holds a master's degree in organizational and social psychology from London School of Economics. She is a certified rational emotive and cognitive behavior therapy professional. She is also founder and CEO of Lingo Nest Private Limited, a language consultancy offering, an extensive array of services in languages. She has been a corporate trainer for interpersonal skills, conducts regular trainings for building emotional intelligence, coping with anxiety, remaining productive and motivated, and much more. I hand over the session now to Niyati to share with us the importance of friendship and relationships in our life. Hello everyone, good afternoon, and welcome to our session, Redefining Friendships in the Digital Age. Well, uh, we are going to be talking a lot about, you know, what friendship is all about, what are the kinds of friends we make, you know, looking at different stages in our lives, what is the importance of friendship, how it actually helps us lead a much healthier life, what are the things that we can do to kind of nurture our friendships? Yeah, so we're going to be talking about all of these things. But before we start off, okay, I'd like to start this uh, session with a question for all of you. And the question is, when I say the word friend, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? And I want you to take to the chat box and respond to this question for me. We'll request the audience to just write in whatever comes to your mind when you hear the word friend and just put it down in the chat box available on the right side of your screen. Whatever spontaneously comes to your mind, just put that down for me. The first answer that we have here is trust, happiness. Lovely. Somebody is <coughs> listing their friends here. Laughter, oh, wow. assurance, childhood. My mom. Somebody says my mom. Lovely. A person with whom we can share anything, anytime. Comfort. Great. Keep the responses going. Are there any? Okay. Unconditional support, love, happiness, memories, support. Mother, mother from another brother. I think they mean to say brother from another mother. Support yeah. system for life filled with laughter, motivation, memories, secrets. Okay, lovely. Thank you all of you for all your prompt responses and for sharing, you know, whatever it is that comes to your mind the minute we say friend. So when we talk about a friend, right, a friend by definition, uh, or, you know, when we look at what fr a friend means, actually, to most of us is someone who we feel connected to. And of course, who's there for us in some way or the other. Right. It's a person with whom we do share a very special kind of bond. And additionally, there is a possibility that we might also have common or similar beliefs and values. And most importantly, like someone pointed out here earlier, a friend is someone we trust, someone we can share, you know, our deepest secrets with someone with whom we are comfortable being vulnerable. 
that's who a friend is. And I think, you know, uh, I, I would like to kind of call out this little uh, way in which William Shakespeare has actually defined a friend where he says that one that knows you as you are, understands where you've been, accepts what you've become and still gently allows you to grow because I think it so beautifully explains what a friend is, what friendship is, or at least that what it should be, right? Somebody who knows you, who knows your past, who knows where you've come from, who gets where you've reached, who accepts you completely for all of you, the good, the bad, the ugly, and allows you and loves you and, you know, allows you to grow and keeps supporting you as you continue to grow. So that's what a friend is. Now, when we talk about friendship, right? Friendship is something that exists from a very, very young age, right? Right from the time that we're little infants, we do start forming friendships. May not be very conscious of it, but we do have friends or people or, you know, small children who are around us at that point in time as well. So when we talk about friendship, see, first and foremost, I think it's a very unique relationship for the very reason that we choose our friends, you know, like I said, family is not something that we choose, but friends are, you know, people that we choose, people we decide to have an association relationship with, depending on how connected we feel to them, right? So that's why I think that this is such a unique relationship because we are going out and choosing who we want our friends to be. And when we talk about friendship, you know, what's interesting is how it takes on very different meanings at different stages in our life. So now if you look to look at friendships, you know, in general, you have childhood friendships, then you have adolescent friendships, you have young adult friendships, adult friendships, and finally old age friendship, right? So as we go through the years, right from the time that we're an infant to the time that we become adults and then also move into our old age, we uh, tend to have friends throughout all these stages. Of course, what those friends mean to us, what friendship means to us, keeps changing as we go through these stages. Let's just take a very quick look at, you know, how or what friendship means at these various stages. So when we talk about childhood friends, right, we have the first stage, which is like the which is between the years of three to seven. OK, which is the momentary playmate stage where we interact with those who are nearest and most accessible to us. So here it's not so much a question of choice as much as it's that of convenience. Anyone who's around me, who's, you know, in proximity to me, I, you will see them just starting to play together or at least be in the same space and keep doing whatever it is that they are doing. The next stage that we have is for children between the age of four to nine years, which is a one way assistance stage, very friendship more from a take perspective, right? So when I see friends, when I see friendship at that stage, it's all about what can I take from this person, you know, that meets my needs. So it's not a give and take relationship. It's just a take relationship. But as you know, uh, you grow up and move into the next stages, you have fair weather friend stage. And that is where, you know, there is more give and take in friendship. There's more cooperation. So the idea of reciprocity occurs, you know, where at this stage where you're actually giving and taking, but at the same time, what happens at this stage is as long as things are going well, it's all okay. But the minute, you know, and there are any kinds of problems or conflicts then the friendship comes to an end. Now, when we look at these stages, there's a little bit of overlap in terms of ages. The simple reason for that is making the transition from one stage to another is more fluid and happens at different ages for every individual. OK, so this is as far as childhood friendships go. When we look at children and friendship, this is how it plays out. 
when we move to adolescent friendships these are the ones that begin generally at the age of 12 years right and at this age our friendship you know or our peers significantly influence our identity as well as our social skills and that's why here it starts becoming important to paying attention to who we are choosing as our friends because knowingly or unknowingly at a subconscious level most definitely those people are having a major impact on our identity and our social skills it's also you know when we explore values we you know negotiate relationships with family members we become more other oriented right so from that childhood phase where it was just about more transactional more about i give you this you give me this and we are playing or whatever this starts becoming more other oriented there is more thought that that goes into how is this person feeling or where this person is at okay so that begins to happen in adolescent friendships now as we move into young adulthood young adult friendships which occurs in teens and then of course can extend to well into our early 30s even right this is when you know uh, we choose friends who have similar values to us in terms of loyalty warmth and the kind of interests we have you know we want to have the same kind of experiences now when it comes to these kind of friends right it's th the values that become very critical i think are caring trust you know commitment being helpful towards each other being supportive towards each other. and of course this is also associated with significant changes in our lifestyle and goals because it's a major transition period right especially our 20s isn't it so we are going through major changes in our life and at that point in time the role that our friends begin to play in our life really becomes critical crucial you know in terms of how we are managing those challenges how we are managing those situations then we come of course into adult friendships which is well ranging from our 30s to our you know 60s uh, this is during the prime of our work and our family lives this is the time that friendships are most valued you know the need to connect to other people to share to talk to them about what we are going through becomes more and more important and crucial right so we consciously want to seek out people connect with them have people who we can speak to yeah and of course it's also a stage again of transition also a stage where many of our friends are going through similar situations like us you know or maybe getting married around the same time switching jobs or getting promotions or getting important roles in a company having children etc so very similar experience can begin to play out and in that sense you know when you have someone to make that transition with when you have someone you can speak to about all of that you know that's when friendship takes on a very very different role and becomes increasingly important in our lives and well of course the last one we have is you know old age friendship right of course this is more complicated because uh, as the older you grow you also start you know losing friends your some of the friends might pass away and things like that and that makes friendship at an old age very complicated sometimes but having said that i think it still plays a crucial role right because uh, people you know in their old age start talking to start interacting with others of that age who live in that vicinity in that locality and you know the idea is just to have someone to spend their time with right to share their time with it could be through talking it could be through playing cards having conversations you know just taking a small walk but it is again at this stage as well where it feels like okay here is someone who's going through what i'm going through right and i can talk to them about it so i i mean i can just think of my grandmom and how much she values her time in the evening of going down and meeting her friends even if it's for half an hour 45 minutes but that's that's something that she looks forward to you know throughout the day so what i'm trying to say is that you know when we talk about friendship from the time that we are born and little children to the time that we die you know friendship is something that exists 
it is something that's important and in different ways at different stages in our life but having friends having people you know that we can speak to to re, you know people we can reach out to people we can share our life with is extremely important and in fact you know when we talk about friendship we, uh, what i'm referring of course to is healthy friendship right because i think uh, most recently there are a lot of talks about knowing how to choose your people correctly and staying away from toxic friendships as well so when we are referring to friendship what we are talking about is healthy friendship and the fact that no matter what stage we are at it is important in a different way at every stage in our life and i think you know when we talk about this digital age and we when we talk about how people have started connecting right with each other i think there is a sense somewhere that people are probably connecting at more superficial levels right and i think especially when it's online when it's on social media you know you might pass a comment or put a like or you know it's it's more about sharing the picture than sharing the time or the moment sometimes and i think that's where you know it becomes crucial to go back and think about what friendship means to us and what we want out of it because sometimes you know in trying to create those perfect lives on social media and trying to show that i have friends you know on social media and the the sense that i need somebody to go out and party with or somebody to put up pictures with or you know things like that we could kind of lose sight of what it is that we truly want right and then suddenly realize at some point in our lives that even though i have people who i can call friends i'm still feeling lonely and that's why i think that when we talk about friendship in this age it's very important to keep coming back to our basics and always focusing on what friendship feels like and not what it looks like i think this is so important right it's not about how it's coming across how it's being portrayed does it look like the ideal friendship that we watch on tv shows or you know that we see pictures of am i trying to imitate that or am i really focusing on how i feel in this friendship so the quality of friendship is very very important because that determines how we are going to feel not what it looks like on paper in photos or you know how a like you might seem on the surface level or what others think you know that's not what counts what counts is how i genuinely and truly feel in my friendship you know do i feel better after spending time with this person am i myself around this person can i be myself completely in front of this person do i feel secure do i feel safe or do i feel like i have to keep thinking about what i'm going to say you know i'm almost like walking very carefully on eggshells as if you know when i have to say something or do i feel safe enough to say whatever it is that comes to my mind you know is this person supportive and is this person treating me with respect and most importantly is this someone i can trust and i think we need to focus on these things you know each time we feel like maybe we are getting carried away because it is sometimes easy to get carried away isn't it because when you look at you know everything that's happening around you in this digital age you can feel like you know i look at a picture and I, or i'm scrolling through my phone and i see a picture of two friends looking like they're having a very good time maybe in a restaurant and i feel like i want that not really knowing the reality of what that is so i think in that sense every now and then we need to do a check in with ourselves and ask ourselves how do i feel in my friendship you know and ask these questions to ourselves to ensure that the answer to it is yes because if it's not then it's not really friendship well now you know also when we talk about friendship and the importance of friendship i think one thing that you know we all should remember is that there are very like it has been proven by research that there are health benefits of having friends 
right? And let's look at what are the kind of benefits that we have, physical health, mental health, emotional health, in terms of having friends. So friends are well good for our physical health. And it actually, there's been enough research that has been done in this space, which points out to the fact that healthy relationships, you know, contribute to good physical health. Right. And having a close circle of friends actually reduces our risk of heart problems, diabetes, you know, things like that. And in fact, there's a lot of research that has been done in the space of how having a good uh, circle of friends is, you know, related to you living longer because you tend to be happier, therefore lesser problems and therefore longevity of life. Right. So in that sense, having friends is proven or has been proven to show that you know it uh, makes us physically much better our physical health much better uh, also less loneliness and social isolation of course right because uh, what happens with loneliness or feeling isolated is it can really affect our mental as well as physical well-being right and i think that the digital age uh, you know having these phones in our hands uh, which I think the objective was of which was to make us feel more connected has somewhere worked in the other direction and made us feel even more isolated than before, right? Because how many times have we seen this, that we walk into a place and there are a group of friends sitting with each other and everyone's just on their phones, right? It's a very, very uh, regular sight today. So in spite of having all these uh, devices which are supposed to connect us, I think we do feel more isolated than ever before. So I think having those connections, having those friends for real, right, is what helps us avoid the isolation. And of course, good friends help us or help prevent that loneliness. So having these quality relationships make us feel good you know, because it makes us feel like I do have someone I can reach out to and therefore, you know, makes us feel less lonely, less isolated. It also reduces stress. In fact, friendships go a long way in reducing our stress, right? Because what happens is, you know, uh, in life, we are going to go through difficult periods, right? It, life is not always going to be great and uh, lovely. There are going to be times that we are going to face major difficulties, major challenges. And I think in that moment, you know, just having someone that we can remove all this or went out all this frustration to, right? When we, are, when we are having difficult moments, we are feeling frustrated, we are feeling down and out, we are feeling upset. And just having someone we can say all of this to, right without thinking twice itself reduces our stress you know whether they can change the situation or not just having that chance to literally say this out loud to somebody else and knowing that this person is there for me and is listening to me reduces our stress also physical touch can make a very big difference and that's why you know friends uh, meeting friends physically, hugging them, you know, holding on to them, uh, kind of, you know, giving a high five and laughing about things, all of these things, you know, act towards, work towards reducing our stress. Also, of course, friends provide us with emotional support, right? So, you know, in our tough times, in our difficult situations, they listen. They really, really listen to our problems. They are empathetic towards us. They try and understand our perspective and what we must be going through. They also play a very important role in validating our feelings. You know, I think sometimes when you're feeling very upset and you're telling someone I'm upset, you just want the other person to say, I understand. You know, I completely understand what you're going through and it's okay that you're going through this or it's okay just to feel the way you're feeling and to have someone say that, you know, is such strong emotional support. Friends also just do nice things for us to uplift our mood and help us, you know, or distract us when we are feeling sad, upset or lost. So, you know, that emotional support is so very important for our emotional health and well-being. Of course, 
friends help us in our personal growth and development and i think that you know when you have good friends when you make good friends you can see that change in your life right so when we're talking about choosing our people choosing our tribe i think we have to be careful about the kind of people we are choosing because you know we may not realize it but on a daily basis the interactions with our close ones keep influencing who we become uh, you know the kind of decisions the kind of choices we begin to make and therefore who we become and how our life begins to look and you can almost tell that a person has wonderful friends just looking at how their life could have changed or has changed right so friends can provide a very positive influence in our life they can be the people who push us to become the best versions of ourselves right when we are trying to take on some good habits or get rid of bad habits they work as support systems for us and that's why strong friendship can actually truly improve the quality of our life also you know friends and especially you know people who are very conscious of how they're leading their lives and are choosing to do or uh, live it in a right and healthy way can provide very very good examples for us our friends might also support our choices and actually help us make those changes or even make those changes along with us right so suppose i say that you know what i want to get fitter now and i'm telling my friend that and then she or he could say you know what let's do this together so they could be not just cheering us but also saying let's try and make this change for the better together and well no matter what you know what else they do but they're always there to cheer us on they're always there to you know clap for us acknowledge what we are doing celebrate our success and this encourages boosts our self esteem in a very very big way so friends do help in our personal growth and our development they also boost our self esteem right they can improve our sense of self our self worth our self confidence right and you know uh, like we said when they're cheering us on you know our friends should be our loudest and biggest cheerleaders and that makes us feel good about ourselves research has also shown that belonging to you know a social group actually goes hand in hand with increased self esteem because people take pride in these relationships and derive meaning from them right so the more friends you have the more uh, you know close important crucial relationships friendships that you have the more uh, stronger is your self esteem so friends boost our self esteem there's also a sense of belonging because as human beings i think what's very important to all of us is you know we want to know that we matter to people and that's really what we are seeking the fact that i am important to people people like me look out for me accept me and in fact even when we talk about maslow's hierarchy of needs i think belonging is right there just after food water safety needs comes the needs for belonging the need to feel connected to people and i think developing and maintaining close friendships is what fosters this feeling of belonging and caring about other people really brings more meaning and purpose into our life you know when we have people to care about we genuinely feel like there is there is a reason to live there's a purpose to be here knowing that we have you know some kind of a support network can help us feel very secure about our life because there are times you know we have certain experiences and it's very natural to feel insecure it's very natural to feel like i don't know you know where i'm at is is it all going as planned am i good enough you know i don't know what's going to happen so in those moments i think having friends just provides that sense of security that feels very very necessary and important of course like we said earlier a lot of support through challenges because life isn't always easy and when it gets difficult you need to have people that you can speak to you know even if it's just 
you know talking to them and just removing our irritation or if it is you know to the extent of maybe just going out one day and just focusing on having fun and forgetting whatever we are going through right so i think that in those difficult moments it's so important to have someone we can call and just say you know what i just need you right now and knowing that when i'm going to say that they are going to come for me and we can you know do something that's just going to make me feel okay so if you have strong friendships it's easier to deal with these difficult moments in our life in fact research has found a very strong link between you know good strong friendships and resilience resilience is our ability to bounce back after a difficulty and it's said that if we have good friendship healthy friendships you know our resilience is much more because even when we feel like we're down and out or when we feel like we failed at something and you know we don't see hope our friends pick us up our friends show us the way our friends tell us that it's going to be all okay and that gives us that courage that power to bounce back and say you know what it's okay that things went wrong it's okay that you know things didn't work out as i had wanted them to but i can still do this so you know that that having those friends and having them say this to us really increases our confidence our courage to come back and fight even if we have faced failure and of course last but not the least healthy friendships tend to make us just happier you know there is such a sense of contentment such a sense of fulfillment when we know we found our people you know when we know we found people that we can talk to we can connect with who will understand us whom we will understand i think there is just a sense of contentment that exists then you know that whatever it is that happens you know i know that i'm going to get through it because i have these wonderful people who are going to help me out right so i think that in fact uh, again a lot of uh, work a lot of uh, studies have even shown research has shown us that you know if we are having happy friends who live close to us our chances or our likelihood of being happy is you know increases by 25% so that just shows us it matters who we are surrounding ourselves with because who we are surrounding ourselves with will really influence how we feel you know how we feel about ourselves how we feel about our life you know it's going to influence the kind of choices decisions we are going to make and therefore what our life is going to begin to look like so it's important we surround ourselves with you know good friends healthy relationships happier people and then that's going to start you know reflecting onto us and our life as well so i think when we talk about we have spoken about all the benefits that friendship has to offer right and i think that again like i said earlier i think it's the quality of the relationship that counts and not the quantity you know i might have just two or three good friends and not 10 or 20 and that's okay you know i think again when we come to the digital age and we look at our instagram or facebook or whatever it might be we're always checking how many friends you know i have so many followers so many friends and now so many people have liked my picture so many people have said this about me i think that you know uh, somewhere the digital age has made the numbers very important the quantity very important but the truth is it's the quality that actually matters and just having one or two good friends is that's it that's all that we need you know and you could have of course we all have those friends that we just go party with or coffee friends or friends we play a sport with and that's fine but we need to at least have one or two people that we can confide in you know with whom we can genuinely really share our authentic selves and tell them what we are going through and i think that's critical having all the other friends who we have fun with who we you know just hang out with is all good as long as we have those one or two people we can genuinely speak to relate to and confide in 
now when we talk about these kind of friendships you know when we talk about how friendship can really influence our life can truly make it better can make it so wonderful i think that's only possible when we nurture our friendships right and that's not just going to happen nurturing friendships takes time it takes effort we have to be intentional about it because see our lives are busy they are busy today and you know it's characterized with a lot of running around and busyness so there is so much to do in a day and such little time that very often we're just running from one task to another multitasking and so on and so forth and you know you don't know when the day starts and when it comes to an end so if we don't consciously remember to make the effort to nurture our friendships we are likely to lose those friends we are likely to not maintain that friendship to have that valuable friendship in our life and that's why it's important to make that time it's important to take that effort and invest that in our relationships in our friendships so that we nurture them yeah so we are going to talk about how to nurture our friendships but before i go to that i think i just like to take a minute or two to hear from you all yeah what is it that you do to nurture your friendships and you can take to the chat box and respond what is it that you do to nurture your friendships so i'll request everyone to just uh, write down their answers on the chat or question box on the right side of your screen uh, so here we are having a few answers coming in frequently calling connecting group smoking <laughs> periodical connection so calling talking wish wish them on their special day weekly calls being by their mm-hmm. side when they are in a difficult phase congratulate on important events celebrate together lovely take out time for friends stay in touch sure. picnic weekly meet at the coffee adda chai together we have fixed outings once a month long rides oh, wow. together reply to Love them me. on whatsapp sending messages having a quick chat playing sports together doing activities together plan tours frequent meetups outdoor trips There's so many answers pouring in now superb superb and i think that's good right because like i said you know if you're not doing this intentionally you know it's very a uh, difficult to maintain our relationships and then sometimes you know like time goes by and we're like i don't know you know he or she was my really good friend i don't know what happened what happened is we didn't make time for that relationship we didn't make time for that friend so i think nurturing our friendship you know if we really want to enjoy the benefits the beautiful experiences that friendship has to offer we need to you know really really take the time and the effort to nurture it so let's look at some of the things that you know we need or we can do to nurture our friendship i think first and foremost is be the friend that you know you want to have always think about it from the perspective of you know if this is the kind of person i want in my life i need to make sure that i'm going to be that person for others as well next is being kind i think you know um as we grow up especially right it's very important how people treat us and we are naturally you know drawn towards people who treat us well who treat us positively nicely correct so i think that it's important that we are kind to people because that matters you know uh at the end of the day it's not about how many things we have in common as much as it's about 
how you speak to me and how you treat me. So I think kindness is very, very critical. Also being a good listener, right? We have to listen when our friends are speaking. And again, I think there, just the way our life is, sometimes, you know, we take it for granted. We, there are times we're sitting with a friend, the friend's talking, and we're constantly on our phone or checking our phone or looking at our phone. And that's not right. You know, that's not how friendship works. It's important that we are good listeners. Also, it's important to be forgiving, right? Because there are going to be times. And when I say forgiving, I don't mean that if someone's really crossed a line or demeaned us, that's a very different thing. But sometimes I think we hold on to our egos a bit too much. You know, and that's where that's where it becomes a problem. So if it's simple things, you know, when, when you've been friends for a very long time, there are going to be times when you're going to have arguments. There are going to be times when... You know, uh, there will be some issues and at that time you need to be willing to let it go. You need to be willing to forgive them. And especially when you realize that that friendship is more important than what's happening in that moment. I think it's also important to show our friends that we can be trusted. You know, when they tell us something or when, you know, they confide in us, it's, it's our chance to show them that you can completely trust me. Also, being vulnerable. If we truly want to have a connection with someone, it's important that we can be vulnerable in front of them. You know, we can tell them what we are going through. We can tell them those things that we struggle with. Of course, also being a cheerleader. Uh, a true friend is always someone who's happy for their friends when good things happen to them. And that's the kind of a person that we also need to be. Tune into our friends' favorite things. You know, know what matters to our friends, what's important to our friends, and do that. You know, I might realize my friend really likes this, likes watching this show. Okay, I suggest to her that, you know what, once in a while, let's watch the show together. Or she likes to do a certain activity. And I say, you know what, let me try this and, you know, let's do this together. So knowing what's important to them and giving it the value that they give, you know, to that thing. Resolving conflict in a respectful manner. And I think that's such an important one, you know, because uh, to say that in a friendship, there will never be conflict is wrong because any healthy relationship should have conflict. Conflict is important, it's critical, but it's how we resolve that conflict that makes all the difference. And that's why when we find ourselves in these situations, you know, when we fought, when we don't agree with each other, how do we manage those disagreements? How do we manage those problems? Ensuring that we are doing that in a way which is kind and respectful is important. Last but not the least, being willing to apologize. Just like we should be forgiving, we should also be ready to apologize when we realize we've done something wrong. It's not worth holding on to our egos in the case of genuine friendships because so many a times, you know, people, when I've spoken to people, they've talked about friends they've lost. And, you know, when, when I ask them that, what is it that, you know, you could have done? Oh, you know, what, what is your regret? And they're just that, I just wish I had said a sorry, you know, because that's all that it would have taken. So I wish I had just said that sorry and things would be okay. So I think these are things that we need to keep in our mind when it comes to nurturing friendships. So these are the big things, the important things. I think additionally, we also need to establish routines, you know, we need to cultivate what I like to call friendship mindfulness. You know, every day consciously asking ourselves, how do I want to connect with my friend? And being mindful in that connection, right? So do I want to send them a text message every day or just give them a call when I can? Or, you know, uh, maybe ask him or her if they want to go for a 20 minute walk whatever it might be, but that mindfulness is important in terms of how I want to connect to them. 
put a regular date on the calendar right so say that every month like some of you actually said earlier that we're going to meet every month it doesn't matter what is happening in our lives we're going to find a way to meet at least once a month or once in two months or whatever that might be create and embrace simple traditions you know small traditions that we've created for ourselves you know the friday of every the uh, every month the last friday of every month we are going to do this or you know once in three months every sunday this is what we are going to do so establishing those routines is important sorry establishing those kind of traditions amongst ourselves is important also other things that we can do one is embrace quick touch points right so finding a way to connect on a daily basis be it in the form of sending a text message in the morning or just you know if i have 5 minutes and i'm walking from one place to another let me just use that 5 minutes to talk to my friend you know rather than not speaking at all and saying that when i have one hour to talk at length is when i'll call my friend instead of doing that that 5 minutes i have let me give them a call you know utilize technology use that to our advantage to make our friendship stronger so you know your friend staying away or is gone away for 3 4 months connect with them on video have video calls so we're seeing each other or we realize that we're extremely busy in our routines right now for the next month two months let's try and connect on video at least and you know maybe have a meal while we are talking to each other on video so simple things like that where we can use technology to our advantage get together you know meet as often as possible do fun things together because yes while friendship is about being there for each other in the difficult times it's also about having fun together you know so plan those fun times and enjoy them also explore if you have any kind of similar hobbies or interests and if you do have those hobbies those interests you know kind of uh, follow them together or see how you can probably join a class pertaining to that hobby you know and uh, learn that together or something like that so these are some of the other things that we can do and so these are i mean everything that we spoke about right from the most important things in terms of you know being forgiving being willing to apologize knowing where we need to prioritize our friendships those are some of the things additionally doing these small things you know which which doesn't really take that much effort but keeps communicating to our friend on a regular basis that well you know this person really cares about me i think that's what's important so in all these way, ways we can really nurture our friendships yeah it is important also to be there for our friends you know sometimes we might be busy with something but if our friend calls and says that they genuinely and really need us or they are in trouble i think it's important to give them our time give them our time and our energy because sometimes you might physically be there thinking that you're giving them the time but not mentally being there so your energy is not there it's important to be there you know physically and mentally when they need us right because that's a way of showing them that i actually care and i'm here not just for the fun parts but also for the tough parts the difficult parts and i think what we all need to work towards when it comes to maintaining our friendships is quality communication because that makes all the difference you know be it when you're having a serious conversation or just a regular conversation whenever we are communicating with our friends we need to be all there we need to practice both active listening as well as mindful responding active listening is where we are listening to understand you know where we are focused on understanding what's happening we are paying complete attention we are fully there we're not distracted even for a second or a moment you know we're giving them a hundred percent and more attention and that's we are all there to listen to what they have to say and understand and mindful response is being conscious about how we are responding to them you know yes of course when someone's been our friend for a very long time it's easy to you know take advantage it's easy to say things and feel like it's okay i said it but you know he or she will understand 
but while they might you know it may not make them feel very good right so it's important we are careful and conscious in the way we are communicating with them and especially if you know that your friend doesn't like certain things it helps to be careful about those things right so in all these ways i think we can really create bonds and maintain those bonds and you know like we've discussed right now i think friends and friendship can make such a difference in anyone's life you know no matter what's happening if you have good friends it really makes it all very worth it so taking that time to nurture those kind of relationships is important thank you neeti for being here and taking us through this lovely insightful session i would also like to thank all the people who attended the session please do share your feedback on the survey link that's been shared and uh, see you next time with another session thank you everyone thank you everyone it was fantastic interacting with you and i'm so glad that you all responded to all my questions and you know we kept uh, some sort of interaction going i hope this session has benefited you i hope you're taking a lot of things back and you are going to commit to making changes in a way that you can truly have wonderful friendships and i hope that for each one of you here thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of the day